Okay, in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about how to represent knurled surfaces in SOLIDWORKS. So knurling is a type of surface finish that you might often see on precision tools and things like that where you need some extra hand grip. And it's worth noting that you don't necessarily have to represent the knurling in the CAD model. Uh, because it's made with a dedicated knurling tool, a lot of times just specifying a uh, call out on a drawing that something is to be a knurled surface might be enough. But if you do want to accurately represent the knurled texture in SOLIDWORKS, for instance, maybe to do a photo rendering, then there's an easy way we can produce that. But we do want to talk about the performance implications because doing a lot of texturing and knurling like this can drive up the rebuild times and there's some particular options to pay attention to to help minimize that effect. So first off, let's take a look at how these were created. I'll do that by just rolling back in the tree here. And basically, initially, I have a, just a cylindrical face that I want to put the knurling onto. And I start off by creating a sketch that will represent the profile of the knurling tool. So this would be kind of a diamond shape I created there, and um, whatever, in this case, I used an angular distance to specify the width of that cutout. Then I'll need to create a path for that. I'm going to end up sweeping a cut of that neural tool profile along the cylindrical surface. So to do that, first I'll create an additional sketch. This one's just a circle. So it's actually the converted edge of this edge of the cylinder. I just created a sketch and used convert entities command on that circular edge. Then from that I can generate a helix. So using the curves tool under features, curves and helix and spiral, that allows me to select that circular sketch that I created and specify a helix of a certain pitch. Once that helix is created, I can hide my circular sketch because I no longer need it there. I'll perform a cut sweep. So you'd find this under the swept cut options under your features. And for that swept cut, I used the profile I had drawn as my profile and that helix as the path. You can see that here inside the cut sweep options. And for the path options, I'll use follow path with minimum twist. Once we have the sweep created, we'll finish out the knurling by simply patterning with the circular pattern and mirroring the geometry. It really doesn't matter the order you do that in. In this case, I mirrored first. So I did a mirror that feature over to the other side to create the opposite hand version. And then performing a circular pattern, which you can see the rebuild time come in there a little bit to wrap that around my cylinder. Now I mentioned some particular options to pay attention to to help out performance. One of those is within the circular pattern. I recommend using the option for geometry pattern. So geometry pattern is useful in, in cases where you don't need the pattern to vary and adapt to the geometry. It basically just copies and pastes the existing cutout over and over. So it's not going to parametrically adjust if there were any relations driving the path. But typically for something like this simple circular pattern, we don't need that. And I've seen the geometry pattern option can reduce the rebuild time of the pattern by about half in some cases. So twice as fast of a rebuild there. The other option to pay attention to is actually in your system options. So up here in your options in SOLIDWORKS, and it's under performance, and it's called verification on rebuild. This performs many additional checks on the geometry to make sure that it's not faulty geometry. But on parts like this where we have lots of textured or repetitive 
patterns. Turning on verification on rebuild will greatly increase the rebuild time. So I definitely recommend disabling that for these types of applications. If you need to be working on a part where you do want to have that advanced checking, you can always turn it on for those other files. Another performance consideration here, if I roll back down to the end, we'll see that if I switch over to my normal tree view, just pressing Control T on my keyboard, I can switch between the flat tree view here uh, that I had previously and my normal tree view where I can have folders and things. Um, the flat tree view is nice to, to look at when you're rolling back through a design like this because it lists everything very chronologically. You'll notice none of these sketches get absorbed into my features, whereas if I hit Control T again, now I have to expand out my sub features to get the uh, individual sketches and things. But you'll see I created a folder here uh, to just organize all my cosmetic detail. So I'll typically always do this, not just with knurling, but any, any cosmetic features that I might not necessarily always need to have in the design. Um, I'll group those into a folder. That way I can create a separate configuration from my configurations tab where here I have a simplified configuration where I don't need all that extra detail. And that can be useful if I ever need to use you know, many of these caps in a very large assembly, for instance. I might want to use this simplified configuration most of the time. Unless for some reason I need to do something like a photo render, then I could enable that other version. Okay. So be thinking about that as you add this extra detail. I tend to try to add it towards the end and add it in a way where I can easily turn it on or off if I need to. Alternatively, if you're using the knurling only for a photo render, it may be possible to create a custom texture to represent that because we do have the ability to create textures that will have things like bump and displacement maps to them that can give the illusion of having a textured surface like that. Um, so that would be a very light way to do it where you don't affect the performance of the CAD model, uh, but when you're looking at the model in SOLIDWORKS you would only see it basically in the simplified state and it would only be in the photo rendering, whether that's photo view or visualize, where you would see the actual texture show up. 